Good morning, everyone. It is February 20th, 2024. And you, if you're joining me, this is Lunch with Lori. And I am Lori Bradley, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in St. Louis, and St. Louis, Missouri. And um, we are, every week, we have a free online class that anyone can watch. Um, and then if you would like the card kits for that day, I always have a special of some sort where if you buy a certain amount, um, you can get the card kits for free. And if you buy um, $50, then you can get the card kits plus a special gift from me. Um, and that's an every week thing. But again, it is free to watch my class and I am excited to show you some more celebration stuff today. Let's, let me get logged in on my laptop so I can see who's watching or if you have any comments. Um, my screen looks a little bit dark today. Let's move that light around for just a second. Let's see if we can get some extra, extra light. All right, we will go with that. And in front of me, I have three different cards. We're going to showcase three different, um, celebration papers today. Today I'm going to concentrate on the designer series papers. Um, this particular one is the most adored paper, which is um, kind of a Valentine paper, but we're not going to use it for Valentine. We're going to make a wedding card. This one is the Softly Stippled DSP, um, and we're going to use that. And then the last one is the Sunny Days, I believe is what it's called, um, paper. So we're going to make three cards. They're all very different and I'm going to show those to you. All of these papers are available for celebration. Um, and that is if you spend $50 in my online store, then you can receive a free, a free gift from Stampin' Up. They, it's the best time of the Stampin' Up here, but let me really quick show you the cloudy days paper. There is a bundle in the mini catalog that matches. Unfortunately, I didn't bring that over to my table. Um, but I'm going to show you, show you the paper clouds and raindrops. Let's scoot that back. All right, the dies for the bundle actually cut out those clouds on the front page. So that's super fun, makes it super easy. Flowers. And some, a little bit of plaid. More flowers. A forest meadow is what I would call it. There's our rainbow paper that we're using today. Strawberries and strawberries definitely always make me think of spring. Um, there's ripe, unripe, and middle of the road ripe there. And then butterflies. Butterflies are also a highly, I think about spring. And cherries, same thing. Always think about spring. Cherries are one of my favorite fruits, so I always look forward to cherry season. And then this really pretty floral paper. Um, I will probably be using the, one of these. Um, papers for my all occasion card class if you're local that's happening on February 29th um, so we'll be using that but for today we are going to use the kindest expressions stamp set um, you could use any stamp set that you so chose um, to make this card but when I saw the rainbow paper I thought oh sending sunshine and rainbows would be perfect perfect for this card so I'm gonna use that today this paper is Pool Party and Shaded Spruce. Um, so I've got a Pool Party card base, and I'm going to make one of my favorite styles of cards today. I really like the book binding fold. Um, so we're going to make a book binding um, card today. And the, the if you'll notice, it's scored in half, and then it's scored again. And this piece right here will be the only piece that gets attached down. Um, you've probably seen one of these before. But that's what we're going to do. Um, I have two pieces of white because I'm a little nervous about stamping sunshine and rainbows today. It's kind of a big, bold stamp. So I wanted to make sure that I um, was able to do that. And when I, little tip, I have a hard time getting things inked on a big stamp when I have the stamp pad laying down. So for a big stamp like this, a lot of times I will pick it up and I will just walk that ink pad right around the stamp. You may not have any trouble, but I always seem to have some sort of issue. All right. All right. 
not quite perfect, but we're going to go with it. There's two sides to every paper until you glue it down. We eh, Let's go ahead. Let's try it. If it doesn't work out any better, then we'll just go with it as is. And that's the beauty. That's one of the first things I tell new stampers, that there are two sides to every paper until you glue it down. Right. If you're joining me, let me know. Do you have this paper? Do you have any of the papers that I'm showing today? And which one is your favorite? All right, there we go. That's a little better. Okay, that is the only stamp on this one. So I'm going to close my ink pad. Now, I'm going to go ahead and attach this. I have just a narrow border, just a little bit, an eighth of an inch narrow border for our um, sentiment. Because I don't want the extra green. I want it to be able to show that rainbow paper as much as we possibly can. So I just did narrow borders for the for this one. Put that on this green panel. Okay. Sit that over there. Then we have this screen panel, this shaded spruce, will fit right inside that pool party, um, pool party piece. And then this piece will sit right here. So there's that. That's how that's gonna look. And I have cut a strip of the rainbow paper. And I wanted to show you, I didn't go ahead and cut that apart because I wanted to show you why I did this. I'll take my trimmer. And because there are, we want the paper to, the designer series paper to look like it flows across the paper, um, across the card. So part of it's gonna be on this piece and part of it's gonna be on this piece. And there's going to be a gap right in the middle. So we want this paper to match on that, um, on that piece. I'm gonna double check here really quick to make sure the size of this one so I don't mess up. Okay. So I'm going to cut one inch off of the left side. And the reason I'm cutting off of the left side is because if I cut it off of the right side, then those rainbows will not line up. So my rainbow pieces now go back together. They're going to be separate, but I want them to look like they're back together. All right, put my adhesive on my designer series paper. If you're nervous about getting your designer series paper straight, um, the liquid glue, the green glue, the Tombow is perfect for that because it allows um, a little bit of wiggle room. And I used regular adhesive, so I'm stuck, literally, if it doesn't work. All right, so we have that piece. Then we're gonna go ahead and do the other piece. And sometimes the directional pieces matter and sometimes they don't. If it's a polka dot, you wouldn't be able to tell where the lineup is. If it's flowers, you can definitely tell. Um, and these rainbows, you can see that as well. So we're just gonna put it on there with our with our pieces. And then this will go on the front of the book bind. It's a super easy um, style of card to make and it looks like it's fancy and it's not. I'm always a fan of fun folds. I feel like I should do a fun fold series. Would anybody be interested in that? If you'd be interested in a fun fold, let me know. I should do a series on fun folds. All right, this will go right on the front. Line it up as best you can with the other side. There we go. So we have rainbows all across the front. And then I'm going to use adhesive. Use your strongest adhesive. The stamp and seal is a very strong adhesive, but if, if you're if you're using the liquid glue or your, your adhesive is not the strongest and tends to come apart, um, I would suggest tear and tape. Just the strongest adhesive that you have, and you're just gonna put it inside that fold so that you have your flap is opening your is not as large as the whole card. Um, this could be vertical, it could be like a, a flip book. 
it could be horizontal, whichever way you want it. Um, typically, I would put a white panel on the inside, especially if I have a darker card, but I did not bring one of those over today. All right, so then we're gonna put our panel with our words on it, our sentiment, sending sunshine and rainbows. Hope you agree that that's a perfect sentiment for this card. I've been waiting to use that stamp. And I found the card. All right, it's a little bit plain. Um, so I'm going to use another celebration item. And these are the opaque faceted gems. They're Clipso Coral. I think that's Blackberry Bliss. No, or is that Espresso? I'm going to be honest and tell you, I'm not sure what color of brown that is. And Pool Party, and we're gonna use the Pool Party gems to just add a little bit of decoration. I'm gonna use my Take Your Pick tool. And just in those spaces on the white where it's a little bit plain, a little bare. And maybe I should have used my fingers. Sometimes my take your pick tool and I don't get along, but it is an amazing tool. If you use it properly, I'm gonna put another small one down. Whoop, I flipped it and it's almost stuck to my table. All right, so we have sending sunshines and rainbows and I think that would be a great card to send to someone who was shut in, someone who was having a bad day, um, I think that'd be perfect for them. The other um, celebration item that would go with this also is the pool party ribbon. Um, and it looks like this, it's a little bit big. It's a wider crinkle ribbon. It is actually called crinkle ribbon, um, but it would also be nice behind there or wrapped around here and tied in a bow. So I, you can't use all of the things, I guess. So that's what I'm gonna use for that one. Set that aside. And then my next card I'm going to make using the perennial postage dies. Um, and I took the softly stippled designer series paper and I pre-cut those so those are ready to go. But I do want to show you and give you a little piece of advice or learn from Lori because she messed up the situation. What I die cut I was actually able to die cut all three at one time. I was able to stack the strips of paper and cut through with my dies. So that is a time-saving tip. If it's if it's designer series paper, if it's not a detailed die, you can cut through more than one at a time. But if you notice, there's the flower, there's the, I'm not sure what texture that is, linen, um, and then my stems on this one are going sideways. So I messed that one up and I had to recut that one. So, I have those ready. So I'll just save that one, and maybe I can do a vertical one at some point. Just change it around a little bit. All right, so this one I'm gonna use Calypso Coral and Pebbled Path, that's two of the colors in the thing. This is also Wild Wheat. The Wild Wheat ribbon and twine also matches perfectly. So we have a Calypso Coral card base. Go ahead and fold that in half. And then we have our panel, Pebbles Path. I'm using the perennial postage stamp set also, just so that it's all together. All right, so I'm just gonna say thank you for your friendship. Again, I'm gonna stamp that before I totally mess up and don't aren't able to flip it. And all the stamps I chose today are not photopolymers, so I'm hoping that I get them straight so that you're not shaking your head at more than me just tying bows. All right. I think that'll work. All right. So I'm going to put my stamp set, or my stamp pad aside. I have this fear of getting my inked things. All right. I did dimensionals on all three pieces. I probably should have already done that. So let's get our dimensionals on there. I'm gonna use the big ones so it doesn't take as many, or it's a little more supportive. Um, 
Originally, I was going to tie the twine. I'm going to use linen thread. I was going to tie the linen thread around um, all, all three of the, the postage. Um, if you watched last week or the week before, I used um, the flirty flamingo twine on a card, and I wrapped it around the perennial postage die because that's perfect. It holds it in place, but with the um, designer series paper being the edge, it's a little bit more flimsy. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to start in the middle. This makes me very nervous, especially now that I know people are watching and you're just going to line it up sort of in the middle the best you can. I'm not going to push it all the way down just in case. Because earlier I had my thing too far to the right. So I'm just going to lay that on there. And then I'll put my stems there. And then the last one is the linen -y pattern. is pretty close. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and push those down. Then I'm going to use linen thread. And like I said, the little indentions on the sides of the postage stamps are perfect, perfect for holding thread and twine. Um, I did this earlier and I struggled, so you'll just get to watch me struggle again. I wanted my twine to be a little thicker. I didn't want just one, one loop. So I doubled my twine. Like this. I didn't cut it off yet because I'm not sure how long it needs to be. And I just threaded that underneath my postage stamp. And this is what I was afraid of, that you'd be watching and then wonder what in the world is Lori doing. We're gonna shove it under there, basically, so that it comes out the other side. Maybe I should do this with my right hand. That might be better. Later today, I am going to do a class for some individuals at a, at a nonprofit called LifeBridge here in St. Louis, and I'm so excited. They are a fantastic group of young adults and adults who have varying levels of disabilities of some kind, and it is they're out and about they get to do things, um, and so they are coming to the office, and I'm going to go to them with my helper. My friend Sherry is going to help me, and we are going to make cards for them, and we're using the Rock and Roll um, Legend Card Kit, and I can't wait to use that with them because I think they're really going to like it. So that's my later project for today. Last night I had Card Club. Um, and those ladies are, are fun, but they're not the same as my life bridge friends. So I can't wait to see them tonight. All right, here's my twine. I'm going to go ahead and separate it so you can see it into two of the, I don't know what those are called on a stamp, the little pieces that come out, like the little indention. I'm not sure what that's called. The little groove, the little groove that looks just like a postage stamp. And then I'm just going to tie a bow. It's still looped on this end. Keep that there. Oh, hi, Sherry. I didn't realize you were watching. It didn't show me who was watching. Yes, Sherry is helping me tonight. I'm excited to do this. Um, we've done this before with the kids, and they always seem to have such a good time, so I'm, I'm excited. What did I do? All right, let's try this again. We're not doing bows tonight. Um, unfortunately, some of them don't have the dexterity to do small things, so we have to have to help them. So we are going to make things as easy for everybody as possible because we want them to be successful in making their cards. All right. Why is this not tying in a knot? See, even when I think it's going to be an easy little bow, no, no, it's not. One more try, because you know. Oh, 
Why do I struggle so much when people are watching? Okay, so there we have our, our tail. I'm actually gonna leave my tail on that side. I'm gonna snip this side because that's we want that to look like a tail, not another loop. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter. Doesn't there's no rhyme or reason to how long it needs to be. I just wanna make it even. These are my kids' scissors. I was trying to use those for ribbon. They're not so great. All right, so we have that. Then we're gonna go ahead and attach this panel to the pebbled path. Pebbled path panel. That is a tongue twister. Pebble path is probably, um, if not my favorite in color that just came out, it is my second favorite. My favorite might be boho blue. Um, but the pebbled path is so versatile. I love it. I'm already starting to worry about the in colors that are going away because those bright colors are my favorites. All right, there we have, have our bow, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put this panel onto the card. Oh, I didn't show you the stippled, stippled paper. Um, just a second, after we get our card done, I will show you that, because it is also a great celebration choice. All right, card number two. We have our postage stamps with our flowers. This paper. Some of the colors are not not my thing. They're not my jam, but I do actually think the paper is very pretty. That's the one that I used. I cut the postage stamp from. The multi colors has just a painted background. Very subtle patterns. Easy for a background on a card. This one looks like a, lin a linen. I think. I think that's linen, along with a rose pattern on the back. And we have our wild wheat stems. I couldn't do that in a large pattern, but I'm okay with it on the smaller piece. And then another linen-y look in pool party. We have another beautiful, beautiful rose pattern, pebbled path roses. And then a Calypso coral painted background. I just like how it looks like brush strokes small pool party and white flowers and it's not the edges of the flowers are what makes it look stippled it's not a solid flower the background is not a solid I don't think the camera picks that up very nicely um, it's very pretty it looks a little bit old-fashioned and then another linen-y tweed I'm not sure what the right word is I'm not a textile expert um, and then some other stems in the pool party the um, wild wheat and the kind of combination of those two. And then a wild wheat painted piece. I'm not sure I will ever use that, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, card number three is, and I've, I've held off using the most adored paper, and I'm not sure why. I didn't use it for Valentine's. Um, you know what I forgot? I forgot to bling up this piece because our gems, our faceted gems, actually match this piece, this card also. So let's add some, I'm gonna use my pointing end this time and see if I get a better result. Put a couple. On my postage stamp so you can see those. And then maybe one down by my sentiment. There we go. So those gems match both of the things. Sorry about that. A squirrel moment. All right, so the most adored paper is a Valentine paper. And I am always one that if there is gold foil or silver foil or bronze on a paper, that's the side I'm going to use um, because that's the fancy side and everybody wants to see the fancy side. So this one has gold foil roses has really cute red hearts, but I didn't want to make a Valentine today. Um, you could easily use any of these patterns for Valentine's, for love, for friendship. Um, falling hearts, very cute. You could cut that into a panel and stamp directly on the paper. 
Flirty Flamingo in red plaid, also very cute. But again, I if I have a choice between the solid non-sparkle, I would go with the sparkly side. So that's the plaid. This is very cute paper. This has been probably one of the most popular celebration choices of my ladies. I'm not sure about this one. I haven't decided what I would do with this one. So that one's, let's see, there's the plaid again. The hearts, I know there's another one. Oh, this one. This one's a little crazy. I'm not sure what I would do with this either. It looks like gold paint spilled across, across my paper. And then a little bit of a diagonal red and pink plaid and then a pink paint splatter or pink ocean waves, I'm not sure. And then this is the pattern that we're actually using today, the small flowers with the tiny hearts. The hearts go this direction. And that is that paper. So I have always told my ladies, I'm not always good at classy cards. I'm, I can do bright, I can do cheery, I can do Fun, but the classy things freak me out um, so I'm not good at those um, I'm not sure why I surprised myself last night and I will show you in just a minute what my card club cards were from this month um, they were not my usual so I branched out I also want to show you for this card I'll show you the branch out in a minute um, I used the something fancy stamp set today the stamp set and the the dies that match and we're going to do here's to beautiful beginnings and happily ever afters i need a wedding card so i thought i will kill two birds with one stone and black and gold together i think are very elegant and remind me of weddings so i'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment on the die piece die cut piece stamp it right in the middle i don't have any gold gems at this time so i can't um, bling this up with some gems, but if you had some gold sequins or gold dots, um, the bloom and pearls that we used in the fall would be perfect. Those are gold and very pretty. Um, the sentiment piece is going to go directly onto the die cut gold foil piece. And this is what I wanted to show you. You, if you have one plate one shot, one of your big shot plates, one of your stamp and cut and boss machine plates that you can keep specifically for foil and shiny paper like this. You can keep your foil looking nice. This one's not going to show through too much, so it didn't matter a whole lot. But if you run your foil through on a plate that is um, has been used and used and is all scratched, it will show on your foil. So if you can just keep one plate, even if you order an extra set of plates and hang on to one of those just for that purpose, um, it's a good thing. I die cut two out of here. I wanted to show you why I did that. That saves foil, saves the foil paper. We, um, the foil paper is $5 for two sheets of 12 by 12, which in terms of designer series paper is a little more pricey. And so we wanna take advantage of what we can take out of the middle as much as we can so we can stretch our dollars because everybody needs to do that these days. All right, so my black panel is gonna go on to my gold panel and you'll see I took that out of the middle and now you don't even know that there's holes in the middle. The holes are in the back, no one will see those, no one will ever know. I didn't want a huge gold border because I didn't want it to be too gaudy um, and then we're going to let this little piece of designer series paper be the star. I'm using not the pink waves. I'm going to use the floral with the heart. I thought that was a perfect wedding card. And then I have some of the Simply Elegant trim. It comes in, in a package with both gold and silver. And I could do the same thing, I think, and make a double. I'm not sure. If you're watching, do you think we should do a single bow or should I wrap it like I did the other one and do a double? Um, let me know what you think. I'm going to try the double, I think. And if we don't like it, we can hopefully figure out how to change it back to a single. All right. I've doubled it over. 
And the same thing. I don't want to pull too tight because I don't want to wrinkle the edges of my gold, gold piece. Double. Okay, that's a good answer because that's what I've got going here. All right. And we'll tie our bow again. Look at this. Two double bows in one card class is crazy. Get up, and I got it done. Ta-da. Oh, definitely a double. Definitely a double. I made that decision. Oh, oh I had it. I had it. I had it. Pretend like you didn't see that. Someday I'm going to conquer bows. I promise. Before they conquer me. I should have cut it off the spool, I think, but that's okay. All right, so that's my bow. These are my tails. I'm going to go ahead and cut that so I know which one is my tail. And then we go. We just need to scoot it over a little bit because it's not centered. We're not over far enough. And then we will put dimensionals on the back of our sediment panel for happily ever after. We have two weddings coming up, but the two girls know each other, so I don't feel like I should give the same card. What if they compare notes? I'm gonna put that gold piece right there. And then let's go ahead and put dimensionals on the back of this, just since I've got two layers of the gold cording so that it doesn't pop off. So we've used three different celebration papers. So, oh, I gotta fold my card too. Um, three different celebration papers. Celebration goes through February 29th. If you spend $50, you get to pick one for free. Um, there are some new added items also on celebration. Um, that you can check out on my website. Some of the catalog, uh-oh. All right, this bow is gonna be the death of me. Maybe because it's cording, it doesn't stay as nicely. Because it's slickery. That's the word I'm gonna use, slickery. Maybe I should glue dot it, that would probably help. I'll do that when I'm done, when you're not having to watch me struggle. That's what I'll do. I'll just actually, let's go ahead and do it. To get our bow to stay in place, we're going to get a glue dot. I don't typically recommend touching them, just putting your paper to it. But since we're going to put it underneath this dot, I'm going to roll it up just a little bit. And then I'm going to put it right underneath the knot of our bow. So make sure you've got your bow where you want it and push it down. And that will keep your bow where you want it. Oh, definitely the double. Definitely. I may have to... That was a good choice. There's the single, there's the double. I definitely like the double. All right, so here's our cards for today. Our Sending Sunshine and Rainbows. Thank you for your friendship. Great cards, all different. All of those papers are definitely different and very versatile. Let me show you real quick my card club cards from last night. I definitely branched out past my usual um, my usual world. Um, my ladies re re requested the Easter lilies cards, and maybe next week or the next week I will show these to you. We did four cards. Um, card club is always eight cards, four different designs, two of each. We die cut some of the flowers um, and the leaves. We stamped and die cut a flower, and then we stamped and die cut the the palm leaves. I think those are palm leaves. Um, so, so those are my card club cards. We used old olive. 
Um, I try not to use too many colors on my card club projects so that the people to go don't need seven or eight ink pads. That would be terrible. Um, and, but again, I'll show you those again later. Thank you so much for watching our class today. Um, I look forward to seeing you all next week. Next week, celebration ends. So that's the saddest day of the year, actually. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you're watching the replay, thanks for joining us. Um, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week um, on the 27th of February. Have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you next week.